All right, well, uh, thanks very much for inviting me to review, um, I think, exciting, uh, potentially, uh, and potentially some practice changing studies that we saw in gastrointestinal cancers and uh, during the ASCO meeting uh, given virtually in 2021. Uh, the theme in advanced disease and upper GI cancers was the advancement of immunotherapy drugs uh, really to first line treatment. And uh, we saw uh, uh, an interesting data from China uh, in a large trial in esophageal squamous cancer, combining the uh, anti-PD-1 antibody uh, camerlizumab added to chemotherapy with paclitaxel cisplatin versus cis, uh, paclitaxel cisplatin alone. And uh, the uh, trial met uh, all its endpoints with improvements in progression-free and overall survival, as well as uh, an improvement in anti-tumor response rate. Uh, and it was interesting that the benefit uh, for this drug uh, was independent of uh, PD-L1 status, that uh, PD-L1, less than 1% patients were uh, uh, showing a similar benefit to PD-L1, 1% or higher. So I suspect this drug will move forward in China and potentially Asia. Uh, the other very exciting study was uh, moving nivolumab into first-line chemotherapy in metastatic squamous cancer of the esophagus. This was, a, this was actually the largest global trial uh, and one of the first global trials ever conducted in squamous cancer of the esophagus, treating over 900 patients. And this was a trial of nivolumab plus chemotherapy with Fulfox. Uh, chemotherapy with Fulfox alone, or a non-chemotherapy arm uh, combining uh, nivolumab and ipilimumab. Uh, and this uh, trial uh, uh, also met its uh, uh, endpoints of improving progression-free and overall survival. Uh, basically, they looked uh, at uh, TPS scores of PDL1 and uh, looked at uh, less than 1% versus 1% or greater. Uh, and uh, they did show in the uh, uh, PDL1 positive patients, as well as all patients, improvements in overall survival, progression free survival, and response rate, and met the primary endpoints uh, of the trial. Um, however, if we look at the breakdown by uh, PDL1 status in patients that had uh, uh, PDL1 scores that were less than 1%, um, the uh, hazard ratio for benefit approached 1. So, so it really depends on how you look at the data. I mean, if you look at all patients, which includes PDL1 negative and positive, there's a benefit, but it seems that the benefit is, is mainly in patients that were a PDL1 1% or higher. Uh, also interesting was the non chemotherapy arm on this trial, the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab versus chemotherapy. So uh, despite uh, 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 on this trial, uh, not showing uh, a better progression-free survival for the non-chemo combination, overall survival was improved as uh, were uh, uh, response rates. So there was actually a little bit of early drop-off in patients, uh, maybe up to a 5% higher death rate for the ipinevo compared to chemotherapy, but that uh, was uh, counterbalanced by better survival, better response, better uh, progression-free survival. So it may be in addition to nivolumab moving for, uh, forward in the first line treatment of metastatic squamous cancer of the esophagus combined with chemotherapy, in selected patients, uh, if there is regulatory approval, there might be consideration for un, uh, the first use of a non-chemotherapy arm in advanced squamous cancer of the esophagus. Uh, we also then had updates of uh, another important trial, nivolumab uh, plus Fulfox in metastatic gastric cancer. Uh, the investigators uh, uh, showed uh, uh, improvement in uh, quality of life. There was a slower decline in quality. This is already a positive trial for nivolumab added to chemotherapy in the first line treatment of gastric cancer with improvements in progression-free overall survival and response rate. And they also showed that the uh, decline in uh, performance status uh, was slowed with this combination. Uh, again, benefits uh, for nivolumab uh, did seem to be dependent on uh, PD-L1 status. Uh, they looked at uh, both the TPS score, which looks at just the uh, PD-L1 and the tumor, and then the combined PD-L1 score, which looks at also at uh, macrophages and lymphocytes. And again, if you look at the uh, patients that were um, uh, uh, CPS high, there was a clear benefit. Uh, but when we see the patients that are CPS less than 5% or CPS less than 1% uh, hazard ratio started to approach one. So 
Again, the, the benefits for these drugs may be more strongly seen in the, um, in the uh, CPS uh, positive patients. Uh, and already in the United States, we have approval for nivolumab in uh, gastric cancer first line combined with uh, Fulfox, irrespective of pd one status. Uh, and we also have approval for the drug pembrolizumab in adenocarcinoma and squamous cancers of the esophagus combined with chemotherapy first line, irrespective of pd one status. Uh, the other important update was uh, the Checkmate 577 study. Uh, we recently had FDA approval in the United States for adjuvant nivolumab in patients with adenocarcinoma or squamous cancer of the esophagus. If they go through chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery and still have residual disease remaining at surgery, adjuvant nivolumab is now approved as adjuvant treatment. This was based on a doubling of uh, disease-free survival from a year to almost two years. And the investigators uh, uh, updated the results um, and uh, showed also that a year of nivolumab um, uh, did not uh, negatively impact quality of life uh, in patients that got this treatment and there were no new safety signals. So, uh, so yet another uh, practice changing trial uh, and another uh, FDA approved indication. Uh, another important study, lots of important studies in esophagogastric cancer was the Neo-Aegis trial from Great Britain, uh, I'm sorry, from uh, Ireland and uh, uh, or other European countries. Uh, this was uh, a trial conducted in esophageal cancer uh, and G junction cancers, adenocarcinomas. There's an ongoing debate whether we should give these patients chemotherapy and radiation followed by surgery or just perioperative chemotherapy alone with a regimen like FLOT. So this was a well-conducted study, uh, adequately powered, uh, where they compared uh, chemoradiation, carboplatinum, paclitaxel radiation followed by surgery versus the older standard chemotherapy, which was the magic regimen of EOX. So EOX chemotherapy given perioperatively versus chemoradiation with carboplatin, paclitaxel, um, uh, and radiotherapy followed by surgery. Uh, patients were well-staged. All patients had PET scan. All patients had endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, the investigators did central radiology review of the radiation plans. Also, the surgeries were done in centralized centers, so it very, very good quality control of the uh, surgery. And interestingly, there was no difference uh, comparing uh, chemoradiation, carbotaxel uh, radiation followed by surgery versus the you know, uh, six cycles of uh, EOX chemotherapy. No difference in three-year uh, uh, overall survival, which was 57% in both arms. Uh, and actually, this, the, 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 both arms actually performed better than was expected with this uh, trial. So the debate is ongoing. Should we give these patients chemoradiation uh, followed by surgery or chemotherapy? I will say that the chemoradiation arm, all the pathologic endpoints were superior. Uh, patients had higher pathologic complete response rates, higher rates of curative resection. The curative resection rate was increased into the 90% range for chemoradiation, and more patients were node negative. And all of those pathologic features tend to favor better survival but despite that, uh, there was not a survival difference between chemoradiation versus chemotherapy. So now the question is whether uh, a better chemotherapy regimen like FLOT, which is the new standard, you know, that's 5 fu oxaliplatin docetaxel which we already know is better than uh, EOX for perioperative chemotherapy, whether the FLOT regimen will be as good or better than chemoradiation with carboplatin, paclitaxel, and radiotherapy. Uh, my read of the study, however, is given the, the um, um, equipoise of chemoradiation versus chemotherapy, uh, I just mentioned the adjuvant nivolumab data, which substantially improves disease-free survival after chemoradiation and surgery. So for esophageal cancer, my preference, uh, given the now shown benefits for adjuvant nivolumab, would be chemoradiation surgery and adjuvant uh, nivolumab. And I'll just mention uh, briefly two interesting uh, studies presented in hepatocellular cancer from China. Uh, both of these looked in, uh, uh, one trial looked in unresectable liver metastasis, comparing serafinib versus intraarterial chemotherapy with Fulfox. Intraarterial chemotherapy was superior uh, on this trial. It resulted in higher response rates, progression-free and overall survival. Um, and although this was an interesting study, we now know that serafinib is no longer the standard in, in hepatocellular cancer. Now the standard of care is atezolizumab plus bevacizumab. So it's kind of hard to look at this approach of intra intraarterial chemotherapy now that we have a better standard uh, chemotherapy in this disease. 
And then the other study from the same center in China uh, looked at intra-arterial fulfox in resectable uh, hepatocellular cancer, looking at immediate surgery versus intra-arterial intra chemotherapy first, followed by surgery. Uh, this also was a positive trial indicating potential improvements in overall survival. It was about a 10% per year improvement in survival with intra-arterial chemotherapy given preoperatively. The criticisms of the trial, uh, it was mainly done at one center, and you could argue some of the patients that they selected had uh, uh, Barcelona B subtype uh, liver cancers, which may not be optimal surgical candidates. So we, um, uh, some of these patients may not have uh, been best candidates for surgery, but uh, provocative data that we need follow-up. Uh, briefly then, uh, just to finish the tour of the GI tract, I just wanna comment on some important studies presented in colorectal cancer. One of the most anxiously awaited was results of uh, the uh, Keynote 177. This was in MSI high colon cancers comparing chemotherapy with pembrolizumab versus chemotherapy. We already know from initial data presentation that progression-free survival response rate, uh, duration of response were all dramatically better with pembrolizumab compared to chemotherapy. And this study now presented survival data. Uh, the survival data trended to favor the pembrolizumab. Uh, and in fact, median survival in the pembrolizumab arm was not reached <laughs> compared to 37 months for chemotherapy. So, uh, so it, it certainly trended favoring pembrolizumab and we now know that pembrolizumab is the new standard of care for upfront treatment in MSI high metastatic colorectal cancer. Uh, one of the confounding factors is about 60 plus percent of patients crossed over to get immunotherapy. So that always undercuts the survival benefit when patients cross over to the experimental arm. But certainly the data reinforce uh, that uh, pembrolizumab or checkpoint inhibitors, metastatic MSI high colon cancer should be the standard of care as first line treatment uh, and are superior uh, options to chemotherapy. Uh, then I'll just mention briefly a few maintenance therapy trials. Uh, uh, there were trials uh, uh, looking uh, uh, from Great Britain uh, in patients getting upfront chemotherapy and then uh, randomized to capecitamine maintenance versus observation. Uh, as have all these maintenance trials or observation trials have shown, active treatment or more intensified treatment uh, always results in improvement in progression-free survival, but not a clear survival benefit. So uh, th this trial from Great Britain, capecitamine versus observation, the focus four trial, does support uh, you know, careful uh, uh, observation off treatment in selected patients. You might lose on the progression-free survival, but you don't lose on overall survival. Um, then uh, there uh, uh, was another uh, randomized trial and patients that are RAS wild type that were getting upfront EGFR targeted therapy with chemotherapy, chemotherapy plus panitumumab. Patients were then randomized to maintenance therapy with 5-FU alone or 5-FU plus continuation of panitumumab. And again, similar to other studies, uh, we get a better progression-free survival with combination maintenance versus single agent, but no clear uh, survival benefit. Uh, and arguably continuing the EGFR drug may uh, enhance uh, toxicity. Uh, so then uh, there uh, were um, uh, other um, uh, interesting uh, trials uh, in the first line. Uh, we know that BRAF mutant colon cancers have a more aggressive biology. They don't respond as well to chemotherapy. And uh, we suspect that they have intrinsic resistance to uh, EGFR uh, targeted therapies, just like RAS mutant tumors. So the uh, French did a randomized trial in BRAF mutant patients of Fulfoxiri triplet chemotherapy combined with bevacizumab or combined with, uh, with uh, cetuximab. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, we already, again, we know that uh, BRAF mutant patients are resistant to EGFR targeted therapies and the cetuximab arm was inferior at all uh, measures to the first line bevacizumab arm. And many of us consider either Fulfox bevacizumab or Fulfoxiri bevacizumab as standard first line treatment for a BRAF uh, mutant cancer. Uh, now that doesn't mean that EGFR inhibitors don't, aren't used uh, in later line treatment. We know that if we, in BRAF mutant patients, if we combine a BRAF inhibitor with a, uh, a cetuximab, that's an active treatment. So a combination of a BRAF inhibitor plus cetuximab is actually quite active in later line treatment and also overcomes the resistance uh, to the EGFR targeted therapies. 
Um, and uh, I think uh, with that, I'll close. Uh, really a very exciting uh, session uh, and uh, reinforcing some of the knowledge that we know already uh, and also um, uh, uh, hopefully indicating directions of future study.